This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go to if you want to set up your own slick looking website or online store. I feel bad for anybody who's just bought a Leica Q2 because this, the Q3, is a much better camera in almost every respect. I say almost because in the looks department, not too much has changed. It's the same, um, it's huge, it's really huge. To what do you mean it's huge? It's huge. A lot of time I thought this is a compact camera, then it is pretty huge. That's a fast lens, it's a semi-lux. It's not that big for a semi-lux. You can't, you can't change the lens, it's just... But the body is smaller than the M, and the Q is a popular body. It's, it's great for people who don't really want to faff about with the manual focusing of the M. Yeah, you have to use the rangefinder, old world style focusing. This is just your point and shoot, full frame point and shoot. But well, actually, um, it, it sounds better when you say it's a smaller M. Yeah, that's not quite what I said. The Q is a posh fixed fast lens full frame point and shoot, which looks pretty gorgeous. Not something they really need to change too much. It's funny when they first showed a, a leaked photo on like rumors and people were going like, oh, it's, the grip takes are different. Is the bottom plate slightly thinner? When they put the Q2 and the Q3 right next to each other, it's like, what is the actual difference? But what they didn't show is the back of the camera because this is all new. It tilts. Oh, what? Before we ask, no, it doesn't flip vlogging style. How dare you even think that? So it just <laughs> does that for low down shooting or that for kind of top down. It's a three inch screen, slightly higher resolution than before. I mean, one thing, before it's got a nice clean round shape here. You know, just look at this side, for example. Yeah, nice. It's like, nice. Like a like. Yeah, like a like. It's like the M. Um, but it's kind of. Well, the screen doesn't fit flush with the camera, you can see it. When you look on the bottom, it sticks out a bit. I mean, if you look at this, that's a nice touch, isn't it? That's your diopter adjustment. Oh, so it popped out. Yeah, then you adjust the diopter. It's kind of surprising that they didn't make the screen <laughs> flush, isn't it? Even though most people are going to hold it like this. You know, just in case you want to do the whole tourist hold. If you do hold it on this side, these hard edges are not as comfortable as before. Kind of, that corner kind of digs into your palm. Most likely won't be a problem for most people. Besides, the positives far outweigh the negative. I mean, it introduces a new way of shooting. Because this is not just for your serious street photographers. Street photographers are going to gravitate towards the M. This was people who like taking lifestyle photos. So, you know, it's handy to have the tilt screen. It does have a nice solid clunk to it when you tilt it. Mm. You know, it just kind of snaps into place nicely. German engineered tilt screens. Literally like minutes of fun doing that. And if you're a bit partial to photography on the street, the waist level viewing is a neat alternative to taking photos. And you still have the EVF to turn to, which has also been tweaked with the Q3. But anyway, they have also put all of the buttons that were on the left hand side before onto the right hand side. So you can have just have one handed operation, which kind of makes sense with this kind of camera. <laughs> and there's not many buttons on the side. I mean, they've actually got rid of a button on this side. Before they had an FN button, uh, play and menu, as well as this directional pad. But now they've just got play and menu. So essentially one of the buttons has just gone up there. Those two are customizer buttons. And then they've got customizer button in the middle of the D-pad here. And then customizer button here. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Of course, they, they make it nice and easy to customize that button. Rather than go through the menu system, you just press and hold. That makes so much sense, Yeah, to be honest. And then you just choose whatever it is you like. That's the great thing about the Leica design is that it looks pretty simple. There's not many buttons. It looks like, oh, it's such a basic camera, but it's the thoughtfulness of making it work with those few buttons so that you don't really have to faff about with all these different buttons and dials. Thing like, which, which one should I press? I just want to take photos. Less boring stuff is put in the way of you and the picture taking process and there's no camera more conducive to getting that shot than the one right here. I think as I'm getting older, I find myself liking this more. Before it was all about, yeah, I want to I use the M. It's the purer, purer camera. I want to manual focus and stuff like that. You can manual focus on this, it's got a tab here, you have to press that. 
and then you rotate it to manual focus because otherwise it's locked, it doesn't move. But yeah, I mean, it's not another button to set it to manual focus, it's just the tap itself. You press yeah. in and, and turn. It's what, all in one, yeah. a nice smooth move. Smooth certainly, and the focusing tab makes for nice manual focusing, if a little stiff when new. But arguably, you buy a camera like this to let it focus for you. Because they've improved autofocus on this. It's got face detection autofocus, hybrid. So it's combined oh. with contrast detection to make it snappier, quicker. Why hybrid? Well, because contrast detection is still good, especially in lower light, if you want it to be a bit more reliable. So it combines the reliability of contrast detection in certain lights with the speed of phase detection. But sometimes contrast detection is good when you're seen as contrasty. It just picks up on that and then boom, it's in focus. But then phase detection, you can't beat the speed of that. So this is actually faster than Q2 for focusing. Kind of goes without saying. The Q3 does a great job of focusing on subjects coming towards you. Way to go, Joe. So yeah, not only does it have phase detection, they've got face, eye, animal, etc., etc. Uh, and it uses a depth from defocus, DFD. It sounds a bit like Panasonic. And <laughs> actually, if you look at the screen, it looks very much like a Panasonic. You know, all those boxes. It, it, it do, isn't it? You look exactly like what I'm holding right now. <laughs> it's uncanny, isn't it? They didn't specifically say it's from Panasonic, but. Who knows? I'm pretty sure it's from Panasonic. I'm pretty sure it's from Panasonic. <laughs> but it, it works nice and quick. It detects all the, the bodies even, even from the back. It's a bit like Panasonic, isn't it? And then you can, you can use the directional pad to choose between the subjects. Look, it doesn't matter where the air system comes from, right? What matters is that the Q3 auto focuses better than before in terms of speed and is smarter with the subject detection. Let's stop mentioning Panasonic, okay? It's not like Panasonic has Oops. just slapped the innards of one of their cameras into this because it is different. It's a newer processor than the Q2 processor. It's got faster focusing, it's got a faster burst rate, it's got 15 FPS burst rate, but also 60 megapixels. I don't think there's a Panasonic camera that does 60 megapixels. That's high resolution power right there. Lots of detail. And that's good because this is a 28 millimeter lens. If you want a different focal length, or well, you can't, but you can crop it. You can crop it inside the camera. And it's got the cool frame lines. So when it, even when you press the digital zoom, you can still see what it's like at 28. Just like that, I like an M. Yeah. And then that's 50. Now when I say 60 megapixels, you can choose between large, medium, or small DNGs. 60. 36 or 18 megapixels, so you don't have to have the full 60 megapixel DNGs. That's nice. To deal with. What is nice is that there's a benefit to using each. It's not just a matter of small, medium, large. The large for maximum details, medium actually has a little bit more dynamic range, and even the smaller 18 megapixels gives good enough resolution for a reduced raw file size. DNG is quite handy. It is. You just chuck it straight in Adobe. You don't wait for, um, oh, you don't have to wait for Aperture to, not Aperture, <laughs> Lightroom <laughs> to update. Uh, Aperture is long gone. And I can't emphasize enough how cool DNG RAW files are. I shot RAW here, just put it straight into current Adobe software. And boom, here we are. You also have to remember that when you go from 28 millimeters through the different digital zoom, digital props, that it does lower the, the resolution. Um, I'll just put a table here. Because at 75 millimeters, you get eight megapixel image. I think it's down to three. And then for 90 millimeters, it's six megapixels maximum. The increased resolution has allowed the addition of the 90 millimeter crop. There is plenty of megapixels to play with up until 50 millimeter with 18 megapixels. 75 and 90 are mostly fine for viewing on screens, but not great for printing big. The 60.3 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor, most likely the same one as the one from the M11, along with the newer than M11 processor, a great combo. I'm pleasantly surprised that with low light shots, you can still get usable results up to ISO 25,000. After that, chroma noise really creeps in to poop on the party. 
and then you've got features like perspective control from the M11, so really, maybe it's not so bad to call it a baby M11 after all, but that wouldn't be doing the Q3 justice because the monster performance makes this a camera that you can rely on to get you the shots you wanted to, and with the addition of the tilt screen, it brings in a new dimension for slick and stealthy street photography. It feels like a more complete camera, and we're not even done with the new features. Another thing is that it's got 8K video. <laughs> that's mad. I was, that, that's a total shock for me. 8K video. I know, right? 8K. So it's not just something inherited from a current Panasonic hybrid camera. That button toggles between photo and oh, video. Wow, we've clocked in quite a lot. Yeah, it does. If you're filming an 8K or 4K DCI or not, it incurs a 1.2 times crop. The only resolution you won't get a crop in is 1080. And then it changes the menu system, of course. Ooh. One thing is that if you've set the shutter speed for video, you have to remember to change it when you switch to stills. I forgot and end up getting a shaky image like this. Okay, Hybrid log okay. gamma. L log. L log and settings. What's that about? Okay. L log. In shot, it's just lock. Oh, okay. You can change sharpness. Luck. You can put a luck profile on it. Before you take the video, if you do a digital zoom, it still shows the full 28 millimeter and then your frame line. But when you hit record, it just shows the cropped image. Remember that those different focal lengths are digital crops though. Even though that the file sizes show the amount of pixels for an 8K file, the cropped images have been upscaled back to 8K. But overall, the videos look great. The sound, however... It's now to put microphone. What? No 3.5mm input and definitely no headphones. They do talk about adding a USB-C adapter to 3.5mm a bit later with a firmware update. I'll but for it. now, no mic. Oh, you just got this one, built-in mic. So you, you, can, you can try to see what that sounds like. This is the built-in mic. This is what it sounds like. It's You're not even a testing in a noisy street. No. I mean, let's see, see what it sounds like here, and then we'll go out to the noisy street in a minute. Let's try the different directivity setting of the mic. Now it's towards the front, so it's towards me. So now I set it to the back. This is towards the back. The internal mic actually sounds quite nice for voices. It's just that it will pick up a lot of ambient sound along with the vocals. The USB-C adapter is not 100% ideal, but a decent fix for audio, especially as the Q3 puts out some excellent quality video. Although it has to be said that the continuous focus for video, while accurate, it can sometimes be a little slow to change focus and you can't adjust the speed. Also, there's noticeable rolling shutter in 8K and 4K. And while we're at it, as it's the same lens as before, it still has noticeable pin cushion distortion. But that can be easily corrected and those little things aren't enough to spoil this camera. For me, this is a cue that can finally stop me thinking about an M. Possibly. It's quicker, with reliable focus, has all the focal lengths and more that you'd ever use on an M, and it does a whole lot more than an M. Is this the ideal one camera to carry with you everywhere to do it all? Well, for sure, I think they're onto a winner with a Q3. If I could change anything, I'd probably put the grip all the way to the back. This is nice that your thumb go fits in there. It's just, it's just still slippery, isn't it? Yeah. It's not light. No. And of course you've got neck straps, so it's going to be around your neck. But when you, if you want to do the whole one-handed thing, it still feels a bit precarious that you're going to drop the camera. Wish they'd kind of put the grip all around the back. But you can get thumbs up grips. Now they do in three what? different colours. They've got black, they've got silver, and then I think they've got brass. On that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm not a big fan of thumb grips. It's like they're trying to, you know, the whole idea of a thumb grip is like it's a film wine lever. Your thumb rests on something. Why would you buy something with such smooth lines like this and you put a thumb grip on it? <laughs> but, you know, it's up to you if you want to buy a thumb grip. It now comes in three different colours and they've got different accessories with different color, three different colourways as well. Because also, when you put a thumb grip, I think your thumb is kind of here. The buttons are here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, you can still access it, but it's just a bit... Why not make it easier to grip in the first place? Exactly. <laughs> it's got a new battery. 
Yeah, uh, the battery is just, the battery is cool. Like that. It doesn't fall out. We'll show a clip of the Hasselblad. <laughs> you press it, press it in. But this is new. The funny thing is it does actually fit in the old Q2 fit. I think you can just fit it in your Q2, but they're not going to say it's compatible with the Q2 at the minute, but it fits. And also they've got a new hand grip for wireless charging. So you attach the wireless charging hand grip and you can just put it on any kind of wireless charger. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you want to set up your own domain, online retail space or website, it's super simple to get started and make your next move with Squarespace. With an easy to use interface filled with loads of templates and backed up with 24 seven customer service. You can try it out with a 14 day free trial and get 10% off your first order with this link and discount code.